So hi everyone and welcome in this new episode of the Red Talk of the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies. In these days we are discussing all issues related to COVID-19 and today we will have the pleasure and the honor to go to one of the most affected place in the world at the moment to speak directly with the with the people, uh, our volunteers who are at the front, front line of the humanitarian response. So today I will have the pleasure to introduce you some of the our Italian Red Cross volunteers who are currently uh, working in Italy to help the people affected by COVID-19. Uh, these uh, three guys here are some of the volunteers who made in the last few weeks uh, some selfie videos were broadcasted on social media worldwide launching an appeal to every individual, to every country, to every person to take seriously COVID-19 and also sharing their experience in this, in this moment. So uh, join me and welcome me to say hello to Martina, Samuele and Maria. Hello guys. Hello. Hello there. So um, you will see that uh, you will have some space in the comments during the live. So please feel free to comment, uh, to stay from where you're uh, watching us, which country, if you have any questions, if you want to ask anything to our volunteers, or simply if you want to uh, say hello from the place you're watching this, uh, this live. So first of all, uh, we will start uh, with Martina. We go uh, to a place called uh, Sassuolo, which is in Emilia Romagna which is a region in the center north of Italy and is a region bordering uh, with, the, with the area with the most uh, number of cases related to COVID-19. Uh, Martina um, is, uh, has been at the forefront of this humanitarian response since the beginning, mainly working on the social aspect of this emergency. And uh, she made a um, selfie video where she was telling it to the world that she was in quarantine herself because she was uh, she got in contact with some uh, uh, tested positive cases. So I will leave the floor to Martina. Can you do you want to tell us something more about your experience and your situation at the moment? Okay. Um, first of all, I'm sorry if I'm wearing the mask, but I'm in Red Cross right now, so I'm not allowed to mm, stay without. And uh, since we sanitize all the spaces every day, and it's it's better to to be like this. So I'm sorry. And um, about fortunately about my quarantine, um, it finished. So I'm okay. I'm one of the luckiest ones since I didn't have uh, any symptoms, and I'm okay. I'm I'm a bit worried about all the other volunteers who were with me, and um, actually they are still in. Um, in quarantine and I really hope the best for them as well as for the other people who are uh, affected in, in those days so um, I am back to the to the headquarters uh, in those days uh, since two days more or less so at first when I was in quarantine I tried to help my local branch uh, as I could from home so I I tried to have to um, to work on the on monitoring the services we were making, so the, the counting of all the other people we were uh, uh, taking care of and all the services we were uh, delivering, um, and then I started to work on the enrollment of temporary volunteers, um, which I think is uh, um, an opportunity that the Italian Red Cross is working on, and it, it's really great because it allows uh, citizens who wants to help during this emergency to just um, be trained uh, online and to work with us. So uh, since yesterday we had uh, six um, temporary volunteers who started to work with us and this is really nice and that's what I'm working right now with the call center and the volunteer and the temporary volunteers sorry and what are they doing exactly I mean which kind of activities are they carrying out Yes, the social services we're um, we're working on in those days uh, 
actually we have the um, ambulance service which it never stops in any in any case but we added more social services for the population because we have a lot of elderly and people isolated or um, with previous illnesses who needs our care and they can't go out and it's better for them to do not even if sometimes they want to um, so we try to uh, we have a call center uh, we answer the phones, we listen to the needs of those people, and we deliver home food, medicines, and all. Uh, and we we try to help them with um, many other, if we can, special needs. I mean, sometimes uh, they need us to. Um, it happens yesterday, for example, uh, there was a family who needed to. Um, uh, to take to the hospital to uh, grandparents uh, a packet with some clothes so what we have done is to uh, we went to the house of this uh, people who called us we, we took the packet and we we give it to the hospital so the man could have the changes wow so that, that's mainly what what we do and every day and uh, the 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 calls are many and we, we're trying to do our best because i would really like to spend just one second about this um this emergency is not just about um it, it's not just a health issue um day by day we see that the social vulnerability is increasing and uh, it needs us to have a global vision on uh, on health which is not physical health, but which is psychological and social health too. And we have, we have, we are not taking care um, just of uh, elderly or Ill, uh, people who's who got sick or which is ill, but um, we we receive calls of young people who's feeling. Um, um anxious or has panic attacks so th this is really important to take into consideration that this is not just a health matter thank you very much martina to share your experience yes indeed it's not only health and i mean we know that uh, all our volunteers are doing many different uh, activities as you as you mentioned so before going to your other friends and colleagues i want to mention that we have a lot of people uh, watching us so uh, we have uh, people from uh, georgia from laos from indonesia from palestine from tobago from really different countries uh, and uh, in the comments there is a great admiration and thank to all uh, the work that you are that you are doing guys so uh samuel uh you are coming from uh, uh nova milanese which is a small city nearby milan which is in lombardy the region much more uh, affected we saw you in the in your selfie video that you just ended a shift so you were with the mask in front of an ambulance you want to tell us uh, something uh, something more about your the cross yeah TV? sure uh, actually, I'm not uh, in on the Red Cross. I'm at home because I'm do smart working. And um, to explain the emergency services now at the moment is so hard. Um, with uh, the protection sy system like masks and the protection suites uh, for the rescue movement uh, are difficult, and um, it's not easy to do as the guidelines say. Um, respecting protocols uh, during our services uh, in those days with the uh, coronavirus uh, is harder than ever. Um, the protection of staff uh, we have to wear often slow down our action and uh, increase the time we need, you know. And um, you talked about my venue, uh, Nova Milanese. Uh, Nova Milanese, there are a uh, hundred volunteers that in this time uh, are working all day for the community. And uh, our ambulances uh, is on, we have, uh, sorry, only one ambulance, and this is on 24 hour a day. Uh, we haven't the big number of volunteer, but uh, there are a lot of those who have the same passion I have and uh, believe in the ideas of the Red Cross and Red Cross movement. 
Um, in fact, uh, if uh, you agree, um, I want to tell about uh, Andrea. Uh, he is a volunteer of the Red Cross. He is my colleague, uh, and in this time uh, he is in the intensive care because he is positive to COVID-19. Fortunately, uh, he is recovering, uh, and we hope that he return in good health as soon as possible. Um, going back to, sorry. We all hope to. Oh, yes, I'm sure. Um, going back uh, to, to the emergency services issue, uh, I think uh, that the one of the biggest uh, problems uh, is to fight the loneliness of patients. Um, and I think that for families, uh, it's hard to. Um, it happens often that the relatives uh, are afraid that uh, they will never see a beloved one, as Martina said. And um, after they let us take patients on the ambulance to go to the hospital. Um, I remember once they kissed the patients uh, and it was uh, at last time. And it was it's very moving. Yeah, I can imagine. I believe that you have a lot of uh, stories that would struck you. Uh, um, yeah. I want to I thank uh, uh, the, some of the people who commented. I have to say that our president, Francesco Rocca, just uh, thank you guys for all you are doing and uh, saying hello to everyone. Then we have uh, the Palestine Red Crescent Society, who is really thanking the Italian Red Cross volunteers. We have people from Jordan, from Suriname, Libya, Portugal, Grenada, Bangladesh, Malaysia. We have a volunteer of the Australian Red Cross saying that they are also providing the food and water to, to people, so it's really, I think, inspiring to speak with you and inspiring to see the, the role of our cross-workers and volunteers uh, all around the world. Um, so now uh, I would like to move to uh, Maria. Now we are, uh, just to give you a picture of Italy, we are in Milan, which is a big city in the north of Italy, uh, also in Lombardy region, which is the affected uh, region. Uh, I want to tell you a little story. Yesterday, when I called Maria to, to, tell, to tell her about this uh, live interview, I saw I heard only the siren of the ambulance, and they're telling me, okay, I'll call you back. So mainly, Maria is uh, the, also at the forefront of this emergency every day on the ambulances. And by the way, she also found some time to get a university degree. So congratulations from us all uh, from the Red Cross person to you for what you did and your sheet. Do you want to tell us more about the situation in Milan, the challenges that you are facing in such a big city? Hi, yes. So I mostly do ambulance work. Um, that's what I do in non-emergency times. I usually do it once a week, so I have my weekly team. Now, since the coronavirus has started, I've been within the Red Cross about every single day, with the exception of the day I graduated, um, working 10, 12 hour shifts. So it's very, it's like all I do. I just go home to sleep and eat and that's it. Um, mostly I do ambulance work, which obviously has its difficulties, um, especially the fact that as a team, we can't work all together because we try to limit the exposure of our members. So less people are on the patient where we have to keep more distance between each other. So it's not just the rest of society, it's even within our own operating procedures that we keep distance. Um, also, the difficulty with our patients, convincing people who are sick and really do need to go to the hospital to go with us because they don't want to. They fear they'll never come out. It's a very big struggle for us to convince people who have those, um, who are very sick that they need to go to the hospital with us. What used to be all sorts of calls, so anything from accidents to heart issues to um, stomach problems, have now mostly been COVID uh, cases. Um, we do a few other things, but three out of four of mine yesterday were COVID suspect, so suspect cases. Um, but we don't do only ambulance. So like at this moment, we're helping the city of Milan and especially the police force to organize temperature screenings um, at the different stations, which is what I organize. So we're doing three major stations, uh, Centrale, Cadorna, and Bovisa. So we do, we're doing that as well. 
Um, we've greatly um, increased all our social aspects. So the, we've had to increase um, the care packages for people who cannot afford to buy food. And as Martina says, what has started out as a health problem has really become a very big social crisis. So what used to be few care packages has just now completely ballooned. We have three cars out every day working to get the care packages out, go get uh, buy food for elderly people or people who are quarantined, as well as essential medicine. Wow. I yeah. think that is a very complex, uh, complex situation for you all. Um, we have a question on LinkedIn uh, from uh, Gafur Nur Abdul. Uh, can you share with us what is the biggest challenge and some lesson learned? I think that is a good question for uh, all of you, if you want to answer. So, Martina, do you want to start? Uh, mm, I think that the biggest challenge is to, um, yeah, mm, to understand and try to empathize to the situation and the needs of people who's calling us um because sometimes they're really afraid and it's really hard to try to calm them down and try to let them uh, understand that we are listening to them and we are trying to do our best because the fear outside it's it's really really big mm -hmm. i think that another thing that i i think it's a challenge and it's something that i that i've learned too during the situation is that we have as volunteers we have to remember that uh, we have to take care uh, of ourselves first uh, um this emergency is really different from other emergency i've been on uh, earthquake emergency, floods emergencies, and this is really different. In the other cases, you can see the danger because it, you can see it with your eyes. You can see uh, houses or uh, which are down, or you can see the water. In this case, you can see uh, the, the virus. And uh, this is why I've been in quarantine too, because I was on a meeting with other volunteers and no one of us uh, uh, knew that someone was infected. So it's really important that when someone tells us to stop, we have to stop and we have to remember that this is for the good. And uh, yeah, I think, I think this is uh, a challenge and it is, it is something that I've learned to, to take care of other people, but I can't be supportive to others if I'm not uh, taking care of myself first. These are absolutely a very good point. Uh, Samuele, challenges, lesson learned? For me, as uh, our president said, this is time of the kindness. And um, for me, this situation is uh, the most uh, uh, important thing are that um, uh, we uh, are rescuers, we are volunteers, but first of all, we are people. And uh, as uh, Martina said, uh, uh, the COVID-19 haven't a treatment and this is uh, a very dangerous. And um, I hope uh, when, uh, we will uh, the battle against COVID-19. People will remember that uh, no one is immune to suffering, and this could increase uh, empathy and uh, respect uh, among the human beings. Yeah. This is uh, really, really interesting. And uh, Maria, do you wanna add something about lesson yes. challenges? Well, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive. But I find the difficult thing is to remember we're in an emergency situation and that people are staying home. Because my days for the last weeks, I don't even know how many weeks it's been, have been work, 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 nonstop. So when we get to a patient's house or we get to an elderly person and they wanna stop and they wanna start talking to you, it gets difficult for me to realize they need company. They need someone physical in front of them to talk to because from what, where I am, I am working, I need to get to the next person, I need to get to the next uh, listing on the list. 
Instead, people really kind of want you to stop, want you to slow down, want to talk to you. And it's difficult for me to remember that that's part of what we're doing as well, listening to them and not just providing the service. Yeah, um, actually there is uh, another question uh, from LinkedIn now, Charles he was asking about the importance of mental health. And I think that uh, the three of you already mentioned the, the importance of that. And also I think uh, the, the challenge to be in touch with patients and people that you cannot touch, that you cannot really not even add, or you have to tell, tell to the relatives to step back. Do you, someone of you have any story that you want to share about that or the importance of mental health in this situation? I leave it to you guys who want to answer. One of the three. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. As I said, um, I, I think this is um, this is something that will last more than the this contagion or all the virus thing because um, I think that when finally everything will be okay and we will be able to go outside and do whatever we can and the number of of people um, who are positive to COVID nineteen will be less. Anyway, mental health will be a great issue because of all the consequences of this situation that we're really uh, living right now. So um, I, I don't have any solution. We're just trying every day to... Um, I think we grow up in this service uh, with people we serve. Uh, they they teach us a lot of things, and uh, as they they answer to our question, we we learn what to do, new possible ways to solve problems and to to help them. Thank you, Martina. Do you want to add uh, something, Samuele, Maria? Uh, for me, the health situation and uh, in the question of the mental of the brain is uh, not on the Red Cross. Um, I, I want to tell about uh, my young people and the youth um, in this period uh, uh, don't meeting uh, each other and uh, we do all conferences and uh, with my friend, with my parents on the live chat, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook. And this is a, a complex uh, a communication system because um, I can say hello to my friends, but I can't uh, with my grandmother because they are older. And uh, sometimes uh, a simple um, call is not, uh, is not enough. Yeah. Um, I think that one of the other challenges is also uh, to explain to your beloved and family what are you doing. Uh, do you wanna, do you wanna tell us something about this, Maria? Yeah, I'll go with that. Um, so at the beginning, uh, what was it, three or four weeks ago, um, when I was talking to my parents about this because I live with them, um, we discussed me continuing on the ambulance. But because both my parents are high risk for this virus, um, we decided that I could only continue working if they left. So they left, they went to live at a different house. And so I'm currently living alone, which is all a challenge in of its own because not only are you working all day, but when you get home, there's no one to talk to, there's no one to reflect with things about. Um, so that, yeah, so there's definitely a lot of reorganization in our lives. Yeah, I can imagine that it's not easy to be a frontliner and then uh, also yeah. being kind of affected. Uh, yeah, and every morning my parents are just calling me, making sure, like, make sure you wear everything or are you being careful? It's very difficult. Yeah, I can, uh, I can imagine. Um, I have to say hello to some other, uh, uh, of our, some other people who are watching us from uh, Egypt, Cambodia, Austria. Spain, I have to mention also the, the work doing by the Spanish Cross in these difficult days, which is another Spain is another country heavily affected uh, in, uh, in Europe together with Italy. 
Uh, we have different questions, some are a bit uh, probably technical. There is one from uh, uh, Abir Mitra, who is from uh, for a question to Milan and Milan region, so probably both uh, Manuele and, uh, and uh, Samuele and uh, Maria, sorry. Uh, how you are handling the situation with the, of the ambulance services with the number of volunteers? Uh, meaning, I think that he wants to ask if there are less volunteers or more volunteers available and how, I mean, how it's difficult for the shift. Mm -hmm. I can take that. Um, so yes, there are less volunteers. I have a lot of friends who either have family members they're living with who are high risk or are high risk themselves who decided they cannot uh, work in this period. But the rest of us are working every day. So that's how we're overcoming this challenge. I don't know, Samuele. Mm, sorry, I don't listen. <laughs> I don't know how you guys the are- connection as a... I don't know how you guys are uh, overcoming the challenge of volunteers who cannot work because they might be high risk. Um, we are working every day, um, I'm working every day, so. Yeah, sure. Okay. I think that um, in this situation, we consider only the COVID-19 emergency, but normally this is not only this. There are headache emergency services uh, or uh, the call uh, are, uh, are not only for the COVID-19 emergency as like a headache emergency or a stomachache emergency or ictus. And uh, for us is um, difficult to, to maintain the at the professional uh, um, level our services but uh, i say that uh, we are not enough volunteers but uh, we are working uh, all day to to keep this level high we have another uh, comment from uh, nick on facebook she's saying to you guys do you have any message for other volunteers responding to covid 19 around the world well, let's start from uh, martina uh, sorry, do you have any other? For the other volunteers responding to COVID-19 around the world. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, my message is to, um, I want to thank them because I think that we are all doing the same work in different parts of the world, but we're saying that the same, we're doing, sorry, the same work, we're doing it under the same movement and with the same principles. So I think that what we do here in Italy, me, Maria and Samuele is um, oriented in the same way in which it could be done in any other country and in any other sorry national society so uh, as before someone thanked us i my message for them is thank you too because you're doing your part in your part of the world samuele for me, be a volunteer, uh, especially on the Red Cross and Red Crescent, is um, is believe uh, in the principle of uh, of this society. And uh, as we said, we don't do only emergency services, as Maria and uh, Martina uh, said, and uh, uh, all of gesture. We take care about the person. Uh, in every aspect. So uh, I think uh, that uh, is a very big, uh, big emotional thing. Maria? I guess the thing I can say is take it seriously from the beginning. If you expect it to just pass or looks like something far away, no. Prepare now mm -hmm. for it to get big. And then if it doesn't, better. But it likely will. This very, this very, very important. And actually, this was the rationale behind all, the, all your selfie videos, guys. And I, I think that they perform quite well around the world because you are giving this uh, very important message. Take it seriously because you still have time to, to do it and to prepare. Uh, we have uh, many, many other uh, people and comments from uh, Ruba, from Colombia, from Ghana, from South Sudan. Um, I would like to ask you uh, guys, uh, what does it mean for you to be a Red Cross volunteer in this uh, 
particular moment. I mean, how much is complex? Uh, how much, I mean, the, the relation that we have with, with your local community? Who want to start first? I'll go. Okay, go ahead, Maria. Please. Well, I, it doesn't seem complicated to me in the sense that there is a need. I have qualifications that allow me to do something about it instead of staying home. And our hometowns are in a horrible situation. So it's not really a big question. It's what can I do? Um, there is the questions about you can get it, you can't, um, your family, this and that. If you have the possibility to separate from them, then, and someone like me who's 23, then I don't, it doesn't even come to mind to not work. It needs to be done. And there's really, that's the only thing. It needs to be done and someone has to do it. And I have the qualifications to do that. I, I think that, uh, yeah, I do agree with uh, Maria first. Um, I will I will just add that being uh, Red Cross volunteers in those days, I think that means to be a good citizen. Uh, I, I always think about that, but I think in those days uh, it's more important than ever to act like uh, a good citizen would do. And this is our chance to work on uh, sensitizing and mobilizing the population on uh, those issues, both, as I said before, health and social. Um, this is my experience and what I've learned with the um, temporary volunteers uh, and matter. And I see that if we uh, are um, acting like example for other um, citizens, we can do something to, to change things and to let them be more informed and to do not underestimate the situation because a lot of uh, people is still doing that. A lot of people is going outside, is uh, doing whatever they want, even if it's not the right thing to do. So, like, be an example. Samuele? Yeah, I agree with uh, the other one. And um, I think for the volunteer, uh, the first question that uh, all of you can, uh, can think is, um, why can I help uh, the community? And uh, in Nova Milanese, uh, all of us uh, uh, are uh, in, in on the network with the government and uh, um, take and reduce uh, the, the suffering about the community. And this is not simple, this is not uh, uh, easy, but uh, I think, uh, as I said, if uh, we think about the principle of the movement, like humanity, uh, we can, win the, the situation and uh, resolve this, uh, this gap. So guys, I think that you are really inspiring for many because the comments and people uh, thanking you and saying that you're doing great work are coming from uh, really all around the world. And uh, please, I mean, to all the people who are watching us, if you have any question, you can simply comment uh, uh, on, on, on the part, at the end of this, uh, live below this live now there is a, a question that we almost touched before but then it would be interesting to add something more there is a question from uh, uh wait from deb shadow say on facebook saying how are you looking after your own mental health and well-being and the one of your colleagues so what are you doing to be sure that you are okay you keep okay uh, yeah, in Italy, in the Italian Red Cross, we have the psychosocial support. So this is something that it's really great for us. And I, I don't actually know if um, all the local branches are provided with psychologists, but this is really important. And uh, personally, always when I see a volunteer who is feeling a bit upset, about calls we receive because sometimes we we just end up the calls uh, a bit upset not just always move from the gratitude of people and uh, 
I think that the, this is a great um, thing to advise all the volunteers to um, call the psychologists they have inside their local branches if they don't have it to please their presidents or their uh, their council, I don't know, to to like to build up a system to support the well-being of volunteers. Because as I said before, uh, this is the first thing. If we are okay, we can help better. But if there's something that it doesn't work with us, uh, we can't be supportive to other others. So that's it's taking care about each other. Do you have any particular other thing to add, Samuele? Uh, yeah, um, the most important thing that I add is that uh, in the region of Lombardy, there are situated an uh, emergency regional headquarters by the COVID-19 emergency and composed by some technical uh, uh, person and uh, as Martina said, some uh, physical, psychology, sorry, um, person who take care about the person uh about the volunteer and um in i don't know if you don't know but sometimes in uh, our mobile phone we receive some sms about uh, our platform that say to us if they are okay if there are any problem about ourselves and um i think that it's uh, a good thing about uh, the health of the volunteer the mental and uh, the security health. Maria, do you want to add something on that? Um, yeah. We have the service Martina was talking about here in Milan. Um, probably the most important thing is that as good it is, is to constantly work to make sure you're not working too much and throwing away all the bad experience and ignoring them. Um, it definitely helps a lot. The fact that the people who are working at on this emergency tend to be um, a tight group so you talk and you see them the next day. And if something went bad the day before, then you can talk to them. So the people, these, this last month, there's a lot of people you constantly interact with, which means you have a lot of social uh, interaction, which other people in the quarantine who have experienced bad experience as well, don't have. Thank you very much. There is another question coming from LinkedIn, uh, from Finbar. Mm -hmm. So, how are, you, how are you responding to the isolation, loneliness of people are experiencing of being locked down? I mean, we already touched it, but probably we can uh, add something more. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, it's a question on isolation and loneliness of people that were experiencing the lockdown. How we are supporting that? What we're trying to do since few days here in my local branch is to, um, since we decided to let all the volunteers who are over 16 years old to do not uh, be involved in any services for their security, uh, we decided to uh, engage them in in a new service, which is uh, calling all the uh, all the people we have talked to in those days to just check if everything was okay and uh, if they liked the service and if they have any recommendation. And obviously this is an excuse to talk to them, to check, to let them feel less lonely. And uh, especially we, we have a focus on people who are alone at home and we try to call them back and just with a simple excuse to check on our service to understand if they need more or if they want to be recalled. And uh, yeah, that, that's what we're trying to do. You want to add something, guys? Um, well, obviously in every service, it's not just ambulance work isn't just about the health of the patients. It's about interacting and talking with them. Same if we go buy someone food at the store, then when we get back, that they always want to talk to us. The, the Milan branch is working on, offers a service to pe homeless people, which are not only already in life, horribly unlucky, but in this moment, extremely, extremely, uh, in a more difficult situation than they already are. So like Milan is offering um, a psychological 
help to um, homeless people who might need to talk to someone. And these are just some of the services we do. Samuele? Uh, here in Nova Milanese, the, the thing that uh, we we done is um, is to compose the team of, uh, of many volunteers that uh, do for the isolating people uh, the simple thing like uh, do a shop uh, as in Sassuolo and Milan uh, doing and uh, have a uh, contact uh, through through our doors and. Uh, I think that it's uh, it will be okay for uh, for reduce the isolation and uh, and uh, the environment. Okay, thanks, Samuele, and um, thank you to all the people who are following us. Many many comments from many many countries. Uh, I think that we can uh, start wrapping up this uh, live interview. I would like to have just a last round from uh, all of you. Do you have any final message for? our audience, for the people who are watching you. You wanna start, uh, Martina? I think it's, uh, again, take it seriously. Please take it seriously. Don't underestimate this virus. Uh, this is for everyone and for the volunteers. Take care of yourself, please. Take care of yourself because it's really, really important. And if you take care of yourself, you can help others more. Uh, try to uh, rest, try to, uh, as you can, if you can, to um, use this time to stay with your beloved ones. And yes, th this is my message. So, Samuele, your the message is uh, keep safe, following our instruction and what WH said because um as i said there's no treatment this is very dangerous unfortunately this is not a joke and uh this is one of the things that population uh, can do to slow down the virus maria don't think that wearing red makes you a superhero you are not immune and so make sure to take all the precautions you can and that are that you should do be taking so guys, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for what you're doing uh, on the field in these difficult days. And thank you to all the people who have watched us for the last 40 minutes and stay tuned for the next edition of the, our live uh, Red Talks on COVID-19. Thank you all again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.